Justin Trudeau ordered Service Canada to enhance old age security payments in a new move. Low income seniors in Canada will receive an extra $1,300 starting Friday. This unexpected income increase is great news for many elderly Canadians facing growing living costs and economic uncertainty. Seniors, particularly those on fixed incomes, have significant financial issues and the government statement is timely and significant. These one-time payments are meant to help individuals in need immediately as inflation affects everything from groceries to housing. The government's support of the elderly shows its recognition of their contributions to society and its desire to ensure they may live dignified lives. To fully comprehend the $1,300 increase, it's crucial to comprehend Canada's retirement income system. This system relies on the Old Age Security OAS program, which pays seniors 65 and older monthly if they meet Canadian legal status and residence requirements. OAS, unlike other retirement benefits, is funded directly by the Canadian government, demonstrating the country's social compact with seniors. Note that this $1,300 boost to monthly OAS payments is temporary. Instead, elders receive a one-time payout to help them weather the economy. This amount might cover many months of groceries, unexpected medical expenses, increased power bills, or unforeseen fees for many beneficiaries. In essence, it's a large cash injection that might improve many low-income seniors' lives. Understanding the payment eligibility requirements is key. The boost is targeted at low-income seniors utilizing the Old Age Security OAS and Guaranteed Income Supplement GIs to establish eligibility. Individuals must be 65 or older receiving Old Age Security benefits and receiving the Guaranteed Income Supplement to qualify. This increases for Canadian seniors, thus they must live in Canada. Eligibility hinges on the Guaranteed Income Supplement. Canada-based OS seniors with low incomes receive GIS monthly. GIS depend on marital status and income. Single seniors have a lower income threshold than couples. This suggests the $1,300 boost is reaching seniors with the greatest financial need under the current government support framework. Seniors on the verge of qualifying for GI should reassess their eligibility status with this announcement. Some people may be qualified for a limited number of GIs but haven't applied, thinking it wasn't worth it. However, updating Service Canada information can make a big difference in circumstances like this where GS status determines benefits. What simple distribution is the goal for this payment? For seniors receiving OAS and GIs, the payment will be automatic, no application or papers are needed. The government will pay OAAs and GEs using the same mechanism. Direct deposit recipients will receive $1,300 in their bank accounts. The fastest and safest method to get paid. Those who typically receive benefits by check will receive a separate check for this hike, which may cause a minor delay compared to direct deposit. The speedy distribution timeframe shows how urgent the administration deems this financial aid. Payments begin this Friday, so qualifying seniors might receive $1,300 soon. Seniors facing urgent financial problems may welcome this speedy announcement to distribution turnaround. Although the government has not yet published notification plans, seniors should check their mail for letters confirming their eligibility and outlining the payment. Beneficiaries should also verify their bank records or sent checks to ensure they receive the exact amount. Service Canada should be contacted if eligible seniors don't get the payment within a week of the start date. This $1,300 bump benefits elders and the Canadian economy. Additional funding for low-income individuals may lead to spending rather than saving, creating a tiny but significant stimulus impact, especially in communities with high senior populations. This money will likely benefit Canadian small companies nearby. Businesses that serve elders or operate in senior heavy areas may benefit from this. This financial boost may minimize the immediate need for other social assistance, allowing these agencies to focus on long-term care and the most vulnerable. There may be a favorable impact on health care, as financial stress can have major health effects. By reducing stress, elders' health may improve, which could benefit our health care system. This one-time boost should be considered in the context of Canadian senior support. The Canadian retirement income system consists of three pillars old age security, guaranteed income supplement, Canada Pension Plan or Quebec Pension Plan, and private savings and pensions, and pensions. This boost strengthens the first pillar, helping people who depend most on government handouts. It recognizes that many seniors may not have enough income from the other two pillars. To understand the significance of this $1,300 raise, consider how other countries support their seniors, especially during economic downturns. While the U.S. government gave stimulus checks to all Americans, including seniors, during the COVID-19 pandemic, these funds were not expressly aimed at the elderly community. 
Pensioner households received an additional PS300 or CAD 510 in 2024 from the UK. While significant, this is less than half of the Canadian boost we're talking today. In times of economic difficulty, Australia offers seniors one-time economic support payments of around CAD 675, which is less than the Canadian boost. Japan, one of the world's oldest nations, has struggled to maintain its pension system due to demographic changes, but hasn't introduced huge one-time payments. Germany has prioritized systemic changes over one-time increases. Canada's $1,300 rise is considerable and targeted, as shown by this comparative comparison. It shows a strong commitment to helping vulnerable seniors during a tough economy. However, it creates long-term solution issues. Canada must examine both short-term support like this boost and long-term sustainability of our senior support programs as it moves forward. Many countries are focusing on systemic pension system adjustments. This $1,300 bump is wonderful for many low-income seniors, but there are risks and bigger ramifications. One immediate issue is whether this bump will raise inflation. Large economic stimulus can raise prices. Since this is a one-time payment for a specific group, its inflationary impact is expected to be low. Still, economists will study it closely. Amount adequacy is another factor. For seniors with long-term financial problems, $1,300 may only bring brief relief. Critics may claim that permanent OA and GI increases are needed to alleviate senior poverty and rising living costs. OAS and GIs are efficient qualifying criteria, however, they may miss financially distressed seniors who don't match GS requirements. To help all elders, future projects may broaden eligibility criteria. Distributing many payments fast can be complicated administratively. Ensuring eligible seniors receive funds quickly and accurately may be a challenge. The government must have systems to address questions and distribution difficulties. Consider how this boost may affect other perks or services seniors receive. The government hasn't stated if this one-time payment will be taxable or alter eligibility for other income-tested benefits, but seniors need know these information for financial planning. This temporary boost raises doubts about Canada's long-term senior support policy. It provides much-needed quick relief, but it doesn't treat the root causes. Senior support systems may be reviewed, including pensions, health care, housing, and community services. In conclusion, the $1,300 raise for low-income seniors is a significant and timely Canadian government initiative. It acknowledges senior Canadians' financial struggles and provides direct, tangible support. It's not a long-term answer to senior poverty and financial stability, but it might change many lives. This boost must be monitored for its effects on seniors and the economy. This initiative's insights could guide future senior population support policies and programs in Canada. It also raises critical questions about how we appreciate and support our elders and what we must do to ensure their well-being and dignity in old age. Seniors who qualify will receive assistance. The rest of us are reminded of the continuous issues many in our communities confront and the significance of strong social support networks. We should continue to discuss ways to support all members of society, including seniors, to ensure no one is left behind.